Hello and welcome to another episode of the in-depth series. A brain-eating amoeba is on the rise as climate has changed. So, has changed the number of brain-eating amoebas and the cases of infection. Now, will this brain-eating amoeba cause the next pandemic? Let's find out all about it. See what has happened, has happened in South Korea. A man has died because of the infection that was caused by this brain-eating amoeba. What is the name of this brain-eating amoeba? Did India ever report any of the infectious cases that are related to it? Everything will be found out in today's episode. These are the many topics that are important from the perspective of GS Means Paper 3rd and also very important from the perspective of prelims. Let us first of all move ahead with the news. That is what has happened in South Korea. A rare and potentially deadly brain-eating amoeba has been identified in South Korea for the first time which is known to cause an infection. It is a rare and severe infection, primary amoebic meningoencephalitis. The infected individual was in his 50s and he has died. He went to a trip in Thailand and then went back to Korea and now he is dead. Is human to human contraction also possible? We will find it out. Let's move ahead and first of all talk about an amoeba. What is an amoeba? It's a highly motile eukaryotic unicellular organism. What is eukaryote cell? It is a cell that has a clearly defined possession of nucleus. It possesses nucleus. It belongs to the kingdom of protozoa and it moves in an amoeboid fashion. That is how it gets its name. It is not a distinct taxonomic group. The biologists have characterized them based on the amoeboid movement. Amoeba species can be found in all major eukaryotic lineages that includes fungi, algae and even animals. Also, they do contain an endoplasm that is granular in nature. They do not have any mitochondria and they are classified as free living and parasitic. There is only a limited number of amoeba species that are capable of infecting humans and they typically invade the intestine. This is a preliminary fact. With respect to human infecting amoebas, only enter amoeba histolytica. It represents the true human pathogen and it infects the gastrointestinal tract. There are also some free living amoebas. They can cause opportunistic infections in humans that ranges from eye infections, neurological infections and even skin infections. And because of this, we can talk about Negleria fowleri. This is the one that has caused the neurological issue. It is a heat loving, thermophilic, free living amoeba and it is a single celled microbe. It is the only species of Negleria that is known to infect people, very less but we still know some of them. The origin can be traced back to the first sentence. The first report identifying the infection which has been caused by it was published in 1965 in Australia. The report identified three fatal infections ranging from 1965 and one from 1961 that was caused due to a new species and it later it was named as Negleria fowleri. This was because of the original author of the paper that was published. The name of the author was M. Fowler. Okay, and um, in a 1966 report, it was found out that in United States also, in 1962, there was a case reported in a similar fashion, which was relevant to this in Florida. The autopsy tissue that was sourced, the sample that was sourced, they identified the PAM infection that had occurred in Virginia that was as early as 1937. So, this is the thing, it, how it got diagnosed and later it was known that it was caused by this particular amoeba, this free living parasite, it was later known, okay, after the infection occurred. They thrive naturally, they occur naturally in freshwater bodies such as lakes, rivers, hot springs and soils. They also are found in thermal discharges of power plants as well as geothermal wells. They are more likely to live in the sediments at the bottom of the lake, ponds, rivers. That is why 
we one should not dig these sediments because it is a possibility high possibility that this amoeba can get released swimming pools splash pads surf parks or other recreational uh, recreational venues that are not maintained well enough that do not have enough chlorine are also a ground for such amoebas breeding also if we have to talk about certain other evidence evidence has suggested that the range of negleria fowleri is expanding northward specifically if we talk about the cordon regions here we are talking about north america which is possibly a result of climate change and warmer temperatures that we are seeing because of the climate crises how can they cause infection see they enter the human body through the nose and they travel up to the brain this is a diagram by the cdc which is showing us the three stages of development okay and then what happens when they are developed enough suppose we uh, we are in a poorly maintained swimming pool the amoeba can enter a person's body through the nose nose and amoeba penetrate through the nasal mucosa then what happens that amoeba migrates to the brain via the olfactory nerves and then they cause the infection and this is the entire process okay so when someone goes for a swim or a dive even in fresh warm waters it can happen okay and people can also in rare instances get infected when they clean their nostrils with contaminated water so we have to save our nose it destroys the brain tissues once they enter into the brain and they cause the infection known as primary amoebic meningoencephalitis the death rate is pretty high according to cdc the death rate is over 97% see only four people have survived out of 154 known cases and that was in the united states between the years 1962 to 2021 and this is in a similar fashion in the entire world the symptoms at the initial stage include the occurrence of symptoms will be within 1 to 12 days of infection it is similar to meningitis in the initial days headache nausea fever in the later stages the person can suffer from a stiff neck seizures hallucination and even go into coma the infection is infection spreads very rapidly that is why it is very challenging and on an average it can cause death within about 5 days that's very horrible treatment is really challenging we do not have a sure fire treatment for this why first of all this infection is pretty rare not a lot of research could be followed for it also this infection it progresses very quickly so there is not a lot of time to save the patient but through a combination of drugs a person can be treated although chances of survival are still less combination of drugs include amphotericin b azithromycin i hope you have heard this name this was used in covid 19 as well fluconazole rifampin mild miltofosin this is a new drug okay and dexamethasone this one was also very much in the news during the covid 19 they are thought to be effective against negleria fowleri and have been used to treat patients who have survived and one more of course that i have already told you miltoforsin is the newest of these drugs which could kill such amoeba in the laboratory also if we have to discuss have they, do they spread human to human that's not how they work they basically go through our nose they make our brains their homes and then finally they cause this infection so human to human contraction has not been reported as of yet in india they were reported in specifically we can see their origin from south indian state aquatic habitats and sewage canals in india are for sure have been established as their living homes and to date there are at least 16 cases that have been reported in india it could be more but of course because of the lack of diagnosis we cannot for sure say how many of them are there but at least 16 were there despite the proven prevalence of these free living amoeba in fresh water bodies only a few cases are reported in india why because clinical conditions they often get misdiagnosed as meningitis and hence so much of under reporting has been done moving ahead let's talk about the other aspect 
where they are found. If I have to talk about 2018, at least 381 cases were reported in India, Thailand, Japan, China and the USA. They have been detected on all continents except Antarctica. It has been described as the cause of PAM in more than 16 countries, this particular amoeba, Negleria fowleri. And Negleria fowleri has been identified in only two in only two countries in Southeast Asia. Now South Korea, because the man went back to Thailand, Thailand and Vietnam were originally there. Okay. Moving ahead, now let's talk about climate crisis, how it is impacting the rise of cases. See, climate change has induced global warming and because of them, amoeba can now be present in areas of the country which are now relatively warmer as they have been. So that is why now they are being found in areas where they do not have any history of the existence. They specifically have spread across in the north regions and in the western regions of the globe. It's also extending that uh, the amoeba's lifespan because now we have larger warm months, warmer months are more as compared to the colder months. So the lifespan is also getting increased and because of this what is happening, the lakes are getting lower and lower, the water capacity is lesser and lesser, sediments are getting activated and once digging is done, the amoebas can get released into the waters. And because of the warmer climate, people might go to lakes pretty much more, to the swimming pools much more and then they can contract infection because of this. Also, one, one to 2021 study which has been done by the CDC has said that amoeba, although prevalence is steady, but they have moved from southern states to northern and western states like Nebraska, Loa, Minnesota, Indiana, Maryland and Northern California as well. Okay. Also, if we have to understand how can we save ourselves from it, then they typically, these, of course, these amoebas typically occur when people go for swimming during or, or warm fresh water places, not salty water, fresh water. So we can wear no slips, especially children can do that. Infections have been reported when people submerge their heads, although it is very rare, but still amoeba can enter your body. When they clean, cleanse their noses during religious practice or irrigate their sinuses during uh, using contaminated taps or faucet water. See, treated public water system is also known to host amoeba of this nature and we must avoid digging or disturbing sediments so that they can sleep there very well. Then one cannot get infected from drinking water which has been contaminated by this. This is a film's fact and you can only be infected when contaminated water goes up into your nose and no human to human contact. Okay. So I hope this all has been understood and now I will take the names of those students who have answered the last question correctly. Those of you who will answer the next question correctly will get your name pronounced. Option C was the correct answer. Anuj, Sagarika, Srinivas, Tushita, Shifa, Bhargavi, then uh, Usha, Soumya, Krishna, Aditya, Disha, then uh, others include Give me a moment. Puneet, Shivani, Gurpreet, Jasdeep, Mishti, uh, Anjali, Suraj, Rohit, Saurabh, Jehozote, Edge of Knowledge, Chanavi, Rupal, Aman, Vishal, Raghvendra, Shivam, Shashank, Vivek, Vaibhav, Anamika, Manish, Baliram, Mohammed Anwar Alam, Akshita, Singh Avinash, Babaji, Rohan, Harvinder, Anu and Ramvi. Thank you so much for answering that question. I will take up your names again in the next segment if you answer the next question correctly. Thank you so much for watching and stay updated. Mm -hmm.